this photo you've got up is that little point and shoot again. The, uh, the, point, and, the point and shoot with the awesome lens. I was like, fuck, that's great. With the we super a, lens. We had a great day. Uh, uh, the roads were wet, and this Volvo is good. It's good in the wet. It's a good uh, wet weather car. I filmed it in Nothing But Rain in mm. Banff, but I had did not get to drive it in the wet. I mean, so you can't fully disable traction control, right? That's the okay. real problem here. I mean, it's not a, really a problem um, because... You know, yeah. it's a f it would before it was like a front wheel drive base like hall decks anyway. So it's like not like you're gonna be like doing crazy. You have to be Chris Harris and d decipher the Rubik's cube of yeah of <laughs> procedures to figure out how to slide it. Also, to need to like we film right. proving grounds and Lee's always like, I wish this ECU gave me a little more. And you're like, this is a minivan, yeah. you know? I mean? <laughs> yeah. So for anyone who's not like, you know, I went up to the big the big skid pad at the top of ACH, like sort of by where this photo was taken, and you know, I attempted to turn everything off. You can't. You mm -hmm. just you just can't. So, um, so that's you know a drawback to having the most complex powertrain you can have south of a koenigsegg it's like a group b car i mean it's so complicated so okay so here's how this volvo works if you don't understand how this thing works we're talking about the v60 polestar engineered polestar engineered that's it's like a whole a whole package right am i peaking or is it just my headphones that i'm peaking I don't, I think I don't know. Okay, I but I can like turn I, you down. Or my headphones are twelve dollar pieces of shit. Could be that too. Little A and B. <clears throat> a B, little C. Um, so you've got a uh, look. I have the act on. Uh, you've got a twin charged, two liter, twin charged turbo and supercharged inline four, eight speed automatic, three hundred twenty eight horsepower, three hundred seventeen pound feet going to the front wheels. Okay. Then you also have two electric motors in series strangely enough yeah not one on each wheel in series with an 11.6 kilowatt hour battery for a total of 415 horsepower at 494 pounds of torque if you have fully drained the battery you don't get the battery power so it's not like all right. the time but you you get a lot there's a lot of battery power like and you have ample warning you know like the porsche uh hybrids it's very logical that oh you've got this gas engine like use it to make electricity yeah so it has a charge mode okay it's not as good as the porsche's charge mode but it does it is there and it does work so you can drain the battery drive on gas while proactively charging the battery back up and then drive on battery again right so if you're gonna arrive somewhere where you had to use ev or wanted to like you know like lo driving to london i think is yeah kind of what an idea for that or just i mean anywhere like anywhere where you've got like city followed by freeway or whatever followed by city you right know what i mean you can use the city the battery in the city switch to gas for the freeway and then switch back to battery if you want i drove around for like four days only on battery really yeah yeah i i didn't use any gasoline at all just like the volt you know what i mean plug it in at my house on a little 110 you got 22 miles of range which for a lot of people that's like nothing but if you live in somewhere like los angeles um 22 miles is like you can run all day, all errands all day on 22 and it, miles and it never kicked into gas you know some cars it's battery and then as soon as you dip if, past 12 percent throttle it's like if you get like on the floorboard the the gas engine will come on but if you if you you can use quite a bit of throttle it's not like a it's not super sensitive like that okay, if you good. put it in eco good. it understands what you want or not eco uh, yeah i guess it is it's or ev whatever if you put it in ev like the car understands that you want ev but if you if you go full throttle it's like oh we need to, we need to go yeah no full is fine but there's cars i've driven where you had to be so so gentle mm -hmm. And gent like gently accelerate as if you were walking, yeah. and if you dipped further into that, oh, it would kick on gas. What hybrid car was that? I know I you know I, what I'm saying? I had I had really, that experience in something, but I can't remember what it was. It was almost a game to like see if you can not get the ICE mm -hmm. to turn on. No, this one's know. no, this one's good. And then, you know, it's a it's a smooth experience if you leave it in regular, which is regular hybrid, you know, which is you use electricity but also blend blend in the gas. Um, it's pretty smooth. It's fine. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's it's a nice, smooth, luxurious experience. It's a really like high quality thing. Just like the buttons, the materials, the seats, like 
all that stuff is like really really nice the seats are really very good nice. time placement to the stereo is great the integration with carplay was really good there's lots of smart storage and all that kind of shit um but here's the thing it's 4500 pounds 45 um 4522 which is 556 pounds heavier than Hannah's the regular one, V60 the the regular one from 2 years ago the fastest one which so even though it's got a turbo a supercharger an electric powertrain you know infinitely adjustable all wheel drive an 8 speed gearbox and so it's got all this shit everything you could throw at a car it's still a couple tenths slower than the old car to 60 and in the quarter mile. Uh, hers is just a front wheel drive. No, all wheel drive. Turbo, all no, wheel all wheel drive. drive transverse inline six turbo. Okay. Funky powertrain. Uh, quick. I remember being quick. It is quick. Yeah. yeah, it was quick. Now, the trade off is like with the battery being placed in an ideal position and with the front end, the, the, the smaller four cylinder engine than the big transverse inline six, like. The, the, it's heavier, but it's distributed a little better, so it feels pretty agile still. But like, you know, it's that Volvo steering is very like numb. It's a numb steering, accurate but numb. You know, but everyday car, love it, love it, because like the non M BMW steering is also fucking numb. To totally you know what I true. mean? Like the, yeah. all those regular, the quote regular German cars, like guess what? They got numb ass steering now too. So like I really liked the Volvo. I found the quality to be excellent. And my video is 19 and a half minutes long. I drove it in the rain. I had a nice rain Canyon day. And uh, it was, I was, Zach was doing the footage, but when I got here, it's very Indeed. pretty. It's a pretty video. Very pretty footage. Uh, yeah. I remember the center screen reacts very quickly because I believe it's like a laser grid. It's not like the technology they use for that center screen. It's not like a pressure sensitive thing. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can hover your finger above it slightly and still activate it, but it reacts like really, really quick. It's a really quick computer. It is a really fast screen. It's not as fast as the Levante I've got outside. Because that's screen. Uconnect. Because it's Uconnect. Drag race, but Uconnect would win all day. Yeah. It would. <laughs> Touch screen it drag race. It would win race. Hellcat, Hellcat, yeah, yeah. the Hellcat of cars and the Hellcat of MMI systems. Yeah. Dodge. Uconnect is fast. Uconnect's great. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I wrote, well, the most interesting thing probably about that Volvo is not the powertrain. It's the fact that it's a fucking Volvo station wagon hybrid that comes with factory adjustable Olin's shocks. Like, not adjustable like sport mode on a button. I mean like you open the hood and you, and you have to turn knobs and you have to know what they mean when you're turning them. Like you can straight up adjust the shocks on this Volvo wagon and they're like Olin shocks. So, so the ride is, you know, fucking great. Such a strange feature, like a great feature. Whatever yeah. engineer got that through and whoever it's for is a very cool person. Like the, the market is- They had to be like, really cool. only lunatics are going to buy a $68,000 Volvo wagon, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and those lunatics will care about certain things like this. It, it's almost like the piece of your former track life that you have to hide from your significant other and that's where it is. It's like, it's under the hood, they'll never know it exists, but you're like, I can do my suspension. Yeah. Now, no, for those of know. you, for those of you, I realize this is a pretty, a pretty hardcore enthusiast show, so a lot of you know what Olin's are. If you've never heard of what these things are, it's just, it's a shock. It's a coilover shock, but, uh, a shock absorber, but it's like what you would put on your track day Porsche or Ferrari like you'd go to BBI Autosport and you'd upgrade from whatever the factory Ferrari 430 or 458 setup was to an adjustable Olin's for track and like to have that on a not to have it on a factory Volvo and then have it also be adjustable uh, is pretty wild and to the Volvo's credit the last gen car also had Olin's too yeah I mean it's I'm, not the first this time, is not the, the new car but it does show like that it's is the same that's the new car the picture you've the got right front? there? Yeah, that's the new that car, 60? and that's un under the hood with under the, the gold hood. knob. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, got yeah. like, you know, it's a white strut bar, tower strut bar. It's got like a graph. It's got a plus and a minus, Polestar engineered Olin's, and this yellow, like, anodized aluminum knob that you can just, you can turn, which is just, it's such an interesting 
like hardcore car person thing hidden in what most people would assume is just the commuter of commuters. Yeah, which is it's cool. Like it's cool. I was definitely mobbing in that video. Like it's not it's not you know cars not slow. Cars cars quick, um, and uh, and it's it's got a real. Um, it's not a full dual personality because it's not aggro even in polestar mode or whatever like it's not aggro like at all you know what i mean but it's at sixty seven thousand dollars you're not getting anywhere near an e63 wagon for money wise you're not getting anywhere near you know an, an rs6 these are it's half the price of either of those things yeah so for half the pr- more you're getting way more than half the car way more that's a good way to put it because the rs6 is obviously much faster in a straight line but yeah if you but don't it's care just about as, that it's just as numb and digital like really ju- yeah, yeah, yeah yeah steering yeah. feel Same. yeah 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 wow. i mean maybe a little it's a little better but it's not like it's it's but you're not talking about a mclaren i know, you know no I, mean? I you're know, still but- talking about Audi is uh, they weigh the same. Audi's using tricks to mask forty six hundred pounds. Volvo and Polestar are doing what they can to mask forty five hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? AMG, I think the, I think it's a little lighter. I think the AMG is. Can you look, Google the weight? What's the cur- what's the curb weight of a E sixty three S wagon? It's probably up in the forty fives, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was the lightest of the three. Uh, it feels the the most agile of the three. Um, Curb weight is Google didn't just spit it out. It didn't. It's it's gotten very good at that. Cur- you didn't type yeah. curb weight. Oh, how about that? Usually, it, usually it's so good at just spitting that shit directly out. It feels the most agile. Uh, what does that say? Four uh, forty six sixty nine. Yeah, so estimated. it's all the, yeah. So it's all the same. They're all about the same. They're all the same. Um, but it's uh, from a quality perspective. You know, it's up there with very nice with a, car with the finest of uh, of assembled. Um, so you know, good interiors. looking. Yeah, I mean, and they just ooh. swapped it out. So now I've got I'm overlapping. Thank God they're that uh, the fleet guys are continuing to, to drop off cars because it means we have videos to make. <laughs> like, yeah. that's that's like the difference between having videos and not having videos. I mean, I'm sure we could find some other weird shit to film, but like we're doing cars because they're continuing to bring cars. Yeah, that's great. very so, good. So we got the the new the XC90 just came in, and we've got the Levante. So it's like fucking SUV week. I guess it is. Well, it's a uh, five five passenger week, with with a dog in the back.